Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. I'm in Cheetah Mill today, sharing the gospel and uh, just in the car park, ready to go out and share the love of the Lord. I uh, just want to share some things on my mind uh, concerning uh, studies that I've done. And I just want to share concerning um, the importance of um, pastoral care and the way to conduct ourselves in pastoral care and pastoral leadership. Uh, I was studying a course on Reformed Theological Seminary on pastoral counselling and there was um, a lecture there on the philosophy of ministry. And he said, uh, and I thought it was really good, that in your church you'll, you'll get three type of people. Uh, you'll get uh, those who are emotional, those who are intellectual and those who are very practical and he was just saying that you've got to learn to get on with all types and that we need all types within the church and I just thought that was a really good um, good thing that he shared um, I just want to talk about debates in Hyde Park I've been watching debates and I've been to Hyde Park and I've seen Muslim apologists picking off Christian preachers there and you know if you're going to go to Hyde Park as a Christian uh, to debate then make sure you go and study what the Muslim apologists are saying there go and study their arguments and what they're saying because uh, if you don't you're going to get really caught off guard so make sure you do your research the other thing it was great to see a representative of Living Waters at Hyde Park Recently, uh, a video debate uh, w was shown of someone from Living Waters, um, the Ray Comfort uh, group. And it was great to see them at Hyde Park. And I hope that other group, Christian groups, go down uh, and give the Christians support there because the Christians are outnumbered. There's so many Muslims there. You know, so I'd encourage you to go down and share the gospel. Uh, and do your research if you, before you get into a debate. <coughs> um, I think... Um, I've been thinking a lot recently about love, really. I, it talks about in, in John... I get my Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. It talks about in 1 John... It says in John chapter 4, verse 10, Here is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. We ought to love one another. And um, we've seen an opportunity to, uh, to park. In a, in a better place but we need to have love for one another and um, and it's just been on my mind quite a lot the need to bear with one another to be patient with one another to um, to respect one another um, and that great passage in 1 Corinthians 13 Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my 
goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long, and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, uh, seeketh n n not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things, charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease, whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For, we, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I am known. And now abide a faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity or love. You know, it's not about winning arguments at Hyde Park. It's not about winning arguments on the streets. It's not about getting your own way in relationships or getting your own way in church. It's about walking in love, real love, where we're patient with one another, where we really cared about one another. And it's not easy. And we need to pray that God will give us more love and fill us with love and that we would have a greater love for the brethren and a greater love for people so this van's moving which means I can get in and uh, get in this get in this spot here So, I just want to be a man of love, I want to grow in love, and uh, yeah, so let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this day, we thank you that there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ, and Lord, we just give you the prayers, and we give you the glory, and we give you the honor today, and Father, we pray that we would walk in love today, and each day, Lord, for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me. Yeah, and walking in love doesn't mean we compromise the truth. Um, I met uh, somebody who serves or works in uh, Chester Cathedral. And uh, that was last week when I was in Chester. And I was quite surprised, really, that he told me, as he was going to lead a service there, that he didn't believe the Bible is the Word of God, that he believed that there were faults in it. And I said, do you follow Jesus? And he said, yeah. I said, well, if you follow Jesus, where does the Lord Jesus question the word of God? And he didn't answer it. He said, we've got to be open. And love is open. And if we're open, the Spirit will show us new truths. So he was open to gay marriage. He was open to anything uh, if he felt that that's what the Spirit was telling him. I told him that the Spirit works with the word of God. But he wasn't willing to listen, and he, his main point was, well, you fundamentalists are very unloving, and I'm loving, and this is the best way to go. But, you know, I, I did point to him and said to him, you know, well, if you follow the Lord Jesus, Jesus doesn't doubt the word of God. And in the end, I had to tell him, I said, look, I said, Really, what it is, is secularism. Your hermeneutic of understanding the Bible ultimately isn't the Holy Spirit. It's secularism. That's what it is. I told him that I'd studied at uh, MA level where the lectures were gay and, and, and I'd read the kind of books that he'd read and stuff like that. And I said, I still believe the Bible is the Word of God and I believe what you're following is secularism and it's not what the Word of God is saying, and the Word of God is the Word of God. And uh, I said to him that if I was a bishop, I'd sack him. 
and any other minister who didn't believe the full inspiration and authority of the Bible. So, but his caveat, his, his kind of argument was, well, you're not loving, I'm loving. But my caveat, my response to that is, well, you're not loving because you're not following the truth. And, and if you're going to be loving, you have to follow the truth. And a lot of people today are going down the way of apostasy by mixing their Christianity with secular morality and secularism. And what you're doing is you're, you're putting acid and pouring acid onto your Christian faith and destroying your faith and destroying other people's faith. And that's not a loving thing to do. But to get back to the pure word of God and to teach the pure word of God and expound the pure word of God and not taint it or mix it with secularism, that is a beautiful thing. Paul didn't say to Timothy, preach the word and secularism. He said, preach the word. When the Lord Jesus in uh, Matthew 28 said, you know, go into all the world and make disciples, he didn't say go into all the world and make secularists. But make disciples. Disciples of what? Disciples of Jesus and his teaching. And nowhere did our Lord Jesus Christ ever question the Bible, ever attack the Bible, or ever said the Bible had errors in it or faults in it. Nowhere did the Lord say that. So you're not being a true follower or a disciple of the Lord if you're not following the Word of God. And if you say the Word of God has got faults, or if you say that, you know, there can be new morality like gay marriage or whatever, new moralities that can just be new that the Spirit has shown us and, you know, and be open to that. You're not following the Word of God because the Word of God is very clear on these issues. It's very clear what is right and what is wrong about marriage, about sexual ethics and about how we should live today. Very, very clear. So, beware of being too sophisticated. Your sophistication should never lead you away from the gospel. It should never lead you away from the simplicity of the word of God. The greater the learned you are, the more humble you should be, and the more you should submit to the word of God. So, love and truth go together. And, you know, in... 1 John, uh, chapter 1, you, you read a lot about truth. But also in, in 1 John, the book, you read a lot about love, the need to love. And truth and love go together. You cannot have real love without truth. And truth without love is ugly, it's dead orthodoxy. But you need both. You need to be loving and caring, but you also need to be a person of the truth. So... You're not going to be popular if you take that position. They're going to see you as narrow-minded and bigoted. They're going to see you as a fundamentalist. But you won't see anybody being crucified for not believing the Bible is the Word of God. You won't see anybody crucified for saying there's faults in the Bible. You won't see anybody crucified for saying, I'm open to gay marriage as a, as a Church of England vicar. But you will see... Church of England vicars crucified who say, I believe the Bible is the word of God and I'll preach it. You will see Christians crucified who say, I'm standing on the word of God and proclaiming Jesus, that he rose again and that he's the only way to be saved. You'll see the secularists crucify them, metaphorically speaking. So my encouragement to you today is walk in love and walk in truth. So thanks for listening and God bless you.